True Size of a Space Marine Chapter, Part 1, 3D Documentary. This should be interesting. Pardon me. <laughs> Hello, I'm Fat Cat, and this is our reaction video to Warhammer 40k. Uh, I'm introducing my wife to Warhammer 40k. We've been on this journey for a little while now. This is a side hobby for us. Uh, usually we upload more often, but we haven't been able to because of life, and I haven't been able to do the other projects I wanted to do because of life. But also, <laughs> to be truthful with you, I'd have stuff to do. So, like play Rise of Ronin, <laughs> like grocery shop, <laughs> grocery shop, fun, um, um, Easter egg shopping, Easter egg shopping. You've got a lot of eggs now. Well, so we should begin the video. Play with cats, because I just found that on um, my lap. <laughs> Play with cats. Yeah, we did your toy back. Okay, right, so let's begin. This video is done by Invicta. Uh, please go and watch his video and watch the original and give it all the love. Yeah, thank you for watching. Who stand yeah. as a bulwark against a galaxy of horrors. Yet formidable as they... Has it been? Yeah, hang on. Oh, I was like, what happened? <laughs> there we go. Space Marines are the greatest of the Emperor of Mankind's warriors who stand as a bulwark against a galaxy of horrors. Yet, formidable as they may be on their own, the strength of these superhuman Astartes lies in their combined arms. From the defensively equipped Devastator squads to the offensively equipped Assault squads, the mixed doctrine tactical squads, and beyond, theirs is a force best understood as a whole. Thus, what does a red mask mean? Some of them had red masks and they're always with the group. Are they like the captain or something? I was just going to ask you that. I was like, what does the red mask mean? I don't know. Ace is telling us. He knows. Oh, Ace is telling us. Okay. In this series, we shall bring to life the entirety of a Codex compliant Space Marine chapter with its scout, reserve, and battle companies, in addition to its vehicle pool, support staff, and command structure. We should do strong. Yeah. yeah, that's strong. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. They look like badasses. But then again, the more hammer, there's a lot worse than them, isn't there? Yeah, like these considered the average. That's a scary thing. That is considered average. <laughs> yes. Like, um. Sad the guy, as the guy was saying, um. Primark, is it Gillian or Gwilit Gillian? It, they'll be talking about the ultramarines the ultramarines are his chapter and they are sort of like a hop hosh posh they can do basically anything they're very versatile uh they're too perfect uh, okay. in a lot of people's like minds i think um yes yeah, let's carry on this is the true <coughs> science of the ultramarine chapter yeah there you go ultramarine you can organize your Get own expansion war host with today's sponsor, Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. Good game. Please go and uh, have uh, have a check. I like check that out for those guys. Um, we'll skip it to go into the actual video. You like the game, don't you? I do like. The, pardon me. I do like the game. Also, um, years ago there was a game called Warhammer 40k Space Marine, which was about uh, being in the Ultramarines, Ultramarines fighting off orcs. And then, spoiler alert, I mean, the game's been out like 12 years, so yeah, okay. Get with the times. Um, <laughs> orcs aren't just the only threat, there's also chaos. Oh, love that. Yes. Um, the next game is coming out soon for that. We're against the Tyranids. Ooh. You need to learn about the Tyranids. I've heard a little bit. I need to learn about the Tyranids. So, <laughs> You're doing a little bit. I, I know the very basic, if yeah. that, like, not even basic. So, my coffee to wake up in the morning. Um, that's a double espresso. What? <laughs> anyway, because uh, we've learned about the Lictor, we've learned about the, the Lictor. I used to know a lot about Warhammer, apparently. Today. He does, doesn't he? Um, does he said there was like a little computer bot when you're not here? Probably, probably. Or it turns out he's the one who designed it. <laughs> he's the new creature. Oh yeah. Get off my ship, Space Marines! He runs the ship. He's the captain. The Imperium. Hey! 
much of the known galaxy. As such, its military is of an equally enormous size, and its scope defies the grasp of human minds. Yet at its core lies a bastion of order, in the form of the thousand space marine chapters. Is that in thousand? Past, I such say chapters that to you. were part of sprawling legions, capable of fielding hundreds of thousands of space marines alongside their associated imperial army, fleet, and logistical elements. However, while these form I read somewhere that the um so the the space marines are treated as like angels, like heralds of the Emperor by uh, humanity. Okay. So you know they worship the Emperor. Yeah. The God Emperor. Mm -hmm. They treat the space marines as his heralds or his angels. Oh, okay. Or his enforcers. Oh, all right. So it's like... So it's a way of treating yeah, institutions worship. were critical in the wars of the Great Crusade. Their incredible power proved dangerously concentrated during the bloody civil war of the Horus Heresy in the early 31st millennium. Yeah, we know that's bad. Thus it was that in the aftermath of this conflict, the Ultramarines Primarch, Robute Gulliman, split the remaining nine loyalist Space Marine legions into roughly 1,000 chapters of 1,000 Marines in what came oh to be God. known as the Second Founding. The restructuring of these troops was formalized in the sacred... I'm, just, I'm, I'm guessing that was designed so no longer will there be a sort of a main body of traitors like there was at the Horus Heresy maybe? Might be a small idea. Tome mm. of the Might Codex be harder to... Astarte. Harder to unite them. Yeah. yeah. Written by Robute Gulliman himself, this exhaustive treatise laid out his ideal for the order of battle, tactical doctrine, and moral behavior of a Space Marine chapter. Its guidance proved key to the evolution. So here we've got like the armory, we've got the headquarters, so master of the chapter, senior officers, administrative staff, support personnel. <clears throat> librarian, so chief librarian. I can't read that. I can't read that. I, lexicons? I really heard. So there's veterans, battle companies, and then reserve companies. Yeah. Okay. They got, yeah, the first veteran company, so I'm assuming these people have been in loads of battles and survived. You got this one, which is like just battles. ordinary. And those are just on reserve if they need them. Yeah. Which they will need them. Which they will, yeah. Yeah, true. If it's Warhammer. Um, of these new and then units. Hmm. Yet, while it has been adopted to one extent or another by the vast majority of chapters, full, unwavering conformity proved impossible. In the ten millennia since its inception and the death of Gilliman, the Codex Astartes has been added to by many other writers so and several dead. competing okay. versions have emerged. Yeah, okay. Yet, the core tenets of the Codex have stood the test of time. With this in mind, we can now describe the general organization of a codex compliant chapter of the 41st millennium. Generally speaking, a codex compliant chapter has around 1,000 space marines led by a chapter master. Each chapter is in turn divided into 10 companies of 100 marines, each led by a captain and a pair of lieutenants. These mm -hmm. leaders are accompanied by a command squad of hand-picked veterans and an HQ unit of at least one of the following. A chaplain, a librarian, a tech marine, and an apothecary. Each company is then further subdivided into roughly 10 squads of 10 marines, each led by a sergeant. 
The companies are traditionally ranked in seniority from the first to the tenth and often have their own particular roles to play in the chapter's function and culture. They are mainly designated by the appearance of their shoulder trim, with each company having its own unique color. The most traditionally defined roles are as follows. The tenth company, designated the Scout Company, is where the chapter's neophytes are first inducted and learn to become space marines. Oh, the ninth. Okay. Been training for them. The Scout Company, though, it makes them sound like they're the badasses, like they're the ones that are going forward all the time. No, they're just the trainees. Well, I mean, if they survive going to the forward, like the forward mm -hmm. fight places, Scout. then they deserve to be the. To sixth companies are designated as reserve companies. Their duties being to hone the skills of aspiring space marines in different facets of war and to provide support and replacements for the fifth through second companies. Well, that's kind of These messed up. These so-called so battle companies are combined arms elements who form the bulk of a chapter's strike forces. Lastly, the first company is designated the Veteran Company, which consists of the chapter's most experienced warriors. Attached to so this make a company force one, of roughly 1,000 like Marines. Yeah, I guess, and also, I guess if you get to company one, you get all the dangerous task skins. I mean, you can survive the other ones, you can survive that one. Are a host mm -hmm. of support personnel, vehicles, and starships. Together, they operate as a completely autonomous military unit whose headquarters may be located on a planet or moon-based fortress monastery, or on a massive flagship for fleet-based chapters. From here, they will exert control over their local area of space whilst serving as a small but critical elite force which can be deployed across the galaxy. They do so under the sole direction of their chapter master, who answers to no one except his fellow chapter masters, the High Lords of Terror, and the Emperor of Mankind himself. With this broad understanding, let us now delve into the greater specifics of a Space Marine chapter's org. I thought that's what I heard. Should I separate them? Who wants to separate first? Who's doing it? <coughs> Who says that? Oh, you little dick. Come on. Let's go upstairs for a bit. Come on. Look, let's go there and happy nap upstairs. Go take up that nap and up on the bed. Come on, go. Ready? Want this? Go with her. Yeah, She's just gonna close the door now. I tried the best I could do with her. Mm. You go upstairs, ladies. Go ahead. I'm gonna come close the window for you. You go take a nap. Go with them both the window. Pee on anything. Right, bathroom is open. I want Ace flying up the window, did you? Alright, I'm gonna try that. I need that locker upstairs too. Organization. In this regard, we will do best to study the Ultramarines, progeny of the Primarch Rabutia Gilliman himself, who would hear most faithfully to his Codex Astartes. More specifically, we will be discussing the Ultramarines around the time of year 999 of M41, just prior Ooh, to the know. fall of Cadia and the eruption of the Great Rift. I've heard of Cadia. Not much. Don't know anything about is it. the though. city of dreams. Oh, dreams. Cyberpunk. We shall Love begin Cyberpunk. with the ascension of a new recruit as he prepares to undertake the long and arduous journey through the ranks of the Brotherhood. Oh, yeah, so let me stress this. It is a Brotherhood. So, like, joining them is, like, a big deal? Yes. You're all a family? Yes. I don't, I don't, know, the, I don't know the intricate sides of uh, things about it, but what, what I have seen from the 40k game is, uh, well... They know it's, I know it's war, but they, you can tell they give a shit about each other. Hmm. In many cases, 
chapters may seek to draw their manpower Still from worlds happen. with harsh environments and cultures which pre-select applicants with desirable traits. There are, however, exceptions to this rule. In the case of the Ultramarines, they maintain several prestigious academies across the realm of Ultramar, dedicated to the training and education of youths from whence candidates are then drawn. Such recruits will be mortal boys who must now undergo the harsh trials of an aspirant. Those who pass either an exposure trial or the less common challenge trial may now be deemed that worthy of stop part of their know. training in the chapter I mean, it's not sound good though, does and it? <laughs> are inducted into its ranks as a neophyte. However, this is but the beginning of their toils, and many will not survive the grueling tests which follow. Yet, those who do are granted the honor of finally becoming a true space marine. This transformation is a literal yeah. one, which involves a neophyte being implanted with their chapter's first set of 19 unique gene seed organs. Such carefully maintained marvels of Remember, you've heard about the gene seeds before. They're, they were given by the Primarchs. Yeah, and they make some superhuman, Genetic right? Genetic yeah. engineering will grant the recipient a range of superhuman abilities. Yet the process is a trial unto itself, with many being crippled or killed in the attempt. Survivors who finally emerge from the medical chambers will now do so as battle brothers, ready to begin their service to the chapter. Here, they will join as a scout in the 10th company, the Scions of Ultramar, under the command mm. of Captain Antilochus. The entirety of the 10th is composed of scout squads. However, owing to its role as a training unit for the chapter, a scout company has no fixed number of squads attached to it. Thus, while its brethren may be expected to call upon 100 Marines per company, a scout company may field many times this number. Ah, because they're all new. They specialize in reconnaissance, infiltration, and sabotage. So I'm right then. So they get the brand new ones to do all the reconnaissance and the sabotage bit. Yeah. So if they survive that stuff, then... They can go higher Scouts in range. Scouts have yeah. received the same they, they the game, it looks like they as their full-fledged like. battle mm -hmm. brothers, but have yet to <clears> earn <throat> the right to wear power armor, instead wearing lighter carapace armor, more suited to their intended role. A standard scout squad consists of four to nine such individuals led by a sergeant. Squads may be armed in a variety of ways based on their intended roles. For instance, a sniper scout squad will be composed of three men with sniper rifles, a fourth man with a missile launcher, heavy bolter or auto cannon, and a sergeant armed with bolt pistol as well as a chain sword as a sign of their rank. Tactical scout squads, meanwhile, will trade out the three sniper rifles for bolters, while an assault squad will use shotguns, bolt pistols, mm. combat knives, and grenades. Thus armed, young space marines will begin to familiarize themselves with the basic arsenal of their chapter. Scouts are also trained to operate light bikes and may ride these nimble vehicles on recon and disruption missions once they have I like the bikes. Those bikes must be huge. They're cool looking though, aren't they? Gain sufficient experience. And these ones. Scouts may also be deployed on the storm type land speeder to improve the squad's mobility and provide it with additional fire support in their often far ranging operations. While it may be tempting to look down upon this most novice of companies, the tenth has its own proud history and traditions. The Scions of Ultramar have produced some of the most renowned infiltration experts and marksmen among the Adeptus no. Astartes. Indeed. So, like, some may look down on them, but they breed some of the best, sort of like, snipers. They make uh, their best soldiers. Like, infiltration ex like, as it says, <clears throat> infiltration experts. So, they breed the best soldiers, then? Not the best soldiers, but definitely the best in their field. So like you can't really look down on them. So they make them as expert in their field then. Yeah, you can't look down on them. 
No. Like, not at all. I mean, they just went through experiments before this, so... I mean, yeah, they just survived all that other stuff, so... Many of the most veteran men of a company may spend years embedded in this unit as a means to train up its youngest neophytes. Once a Marine has earned sufficient experience as a scout, he will finally be implanted with his black carapace, which serves as a neural control interface that enables the full use of power armor. Thus equipped, he can now begin his journey through the ranks of the reserve companies. This starts with the ninth company, the Stormbringers, led by Captain Ooh. Sinon. It Happening. is a dedicated heavy support company composed of 10 Devastator squads. Of all the companies, they are the most defensive in doctrine, as shall be made clear okay. by their armament. Each Devastator squad consists got? of a sergeant and up to nine Marines. Four are designated as heavy weapon specialists, with the rest acting as support. While the latter carries mm. the typical bolter, pistol, and grenade, the former brings to bear a far heavier arsenal, which includes heavy bolters, las cannons, plasma cannons, multi melters, oh. missile launchers, and I think, grab cannon. I think it's a flamethrower. Like a, a oh. flamethrower on steroids, I think. Okay. Mm. Like, what the hell is that? The squad sergeant is given additional heavy weapons training making him an expert in the use and coordination of these mighty armaments. Sergeants will not, however, carry a heavy weapon themselves, and instead are equipped with their usual chainsword and some form of ranged weapon. Such devastator squads may act as generalists who deploy a range of weaponry to meet any foe, or may act as specialists with gear designed to counter a particular enemy type such as heavy armor or massed hordes. Thus, in the words of the Primarch Rebute Gilliman, quote, A devastator's reach shall be without limit, and his touch That's without a mercy. Um, Fire shall roar from his fingertips, uh, but awesome. it shall consume yeah, they make anything not. Out of anything, Thunder they? will roar when he calls, yet it will swallow him not. Wherever he stands, that shall be his fortress of righteousness. Ooh, These really? devastators will be What's further reinforced by their vehicles. A prime example is the Centurion class war suit, which has only recently been seeing more widespread adoption. This exoskeleton fits over a marine's armor, further protecting them with ceramite plates and granting him the ability to wield even more formidable weaponry. Centurion pilots are often drawn from the most veteran of the chapter's Devastator squads, and from there may be deployed alongside the Ninth, depending on the situation. Like all of the following companies, the Ninth also maintains a force of transports ranging from the small, nimble land speeders to the large, plodding Rhino and Razorback APCs. Additionally, Ooh. the Ninth may count on the support of sick. Dreadnought combat walkers and whirlwind artillery tanks. These, Whoa. the rest this of the company's vehicle needs, yeah. will be drawn from the chapter armory, which we shall discuss later. After serving in the Ninth and proving themselves capable of holding their ground against any foe, a Marine will next move to the Eighth Company, where they shall learn the art of the offense. Within the Ultramarines chapter, they bear the title the Honor Blades and are led by mm. Captain Joris Numator. It is composed of 10 assault squads, the primary close combat and assault specialists of the Ultramarines. Each assault squad consists of a sergeant and up to nine Marines who will usually be equipped with jump packs to greatly enhance their mobility and allow for devastating aerial attacks. Assault Marines are primarily armed with a combination of bolt, pistol, chainsword, and frag or crack grenades. One or two Marines may be assigned a flamer to improve the squad's close range firepower. Sergeants, meanwhile, are permitted a greater variety of war gear owing to their superior I think, I think some sergeants do wear red In addition, they are bolstered by an yeah, I think so. In some chapters, I think that, yeah, they 
wear the masks for sure. <clears throat> Is it to show that they're in charge? I think it's to show to show that despite being part of that unit, they are above that position. So they're just the leader of it. So they want to show it. Yeah, yeah. Which makes sense. They should. If they're the sergeant, they're. <laughs> They've been in it a long time. Yeah, so you've got upgraded you know, comms package to respect. allow them to operate efficiently whilst well ahead of the main army. Such assault squads are among the most mobile of space That's marine awesome. units, being used for a variety awesome. of roles, including reconnaissance in force, decapitation strikes, and counter assault missions. Do you say decapitation Their strikes? reputation precedes them, oh, as was okay. the intent of Robutier Gilliman, who declared of the assault marine. Quote, he shall descend upon the perfidious foe as an angel of judgment from on high. Let the jump pack be his wings, and the roar of its engines a hymn of retribution. Let the chainsword be his scepter of decree, its harsh voice singing joyfully with each and every blow. With it shall the assault marine bring like. bloody retribution to the heretic, the traitor, and all alien aggressors who trespass on the Emperor's domain. So the company's mobility like. cool, is it? further enhanced by a vehicle pool, which includes a larger than usual number of bikes and land speeders, and is supported by its own air force of Storm Talon gunships. In terms of heavy armor, the 8th has them. access to the typical complement of walkers, transports, artillery, and tanks and may call upon such assets from the armory as needed. Now, having proven their merit in defense among the Devastator squads of the 9th and in offense among the assault squads of the 8th, a Marine will advance to the 7th Company, where the two doctrines shall be merged. So For the Ultramarines, the this occurs yeah. in the ranks of the Defenders of Caesarean, who are led by Captain Gerard Ixion. They are composed of 10 tactical squads, the masters of combined arms warfare, who have long formed the backbone of Space Marine strike forces for over 10 millennia. Consisting of a sergeant and up to nine Marines, these are highly adaptable units designed to operate effectively against oh. numerous types of opponents. As such, I was, going to want, I was going to say, what do these represent? The, the ones with the red rifles and that. The majority of the squad is equipped with a bolt gun, bolt pistol, combat blade, and grenades. For improved firepower and flexibility, two of its members may be equipped in the oh, manner of devastators with special weaponry such as flamers, melter guns, plasma guns, and grav guns. As usual, sergeants have access to a wide variety of different war gear, such as combi weapons and powered close combat weapons, although they often go into battle armed with a bolt pistol and chainsword. That's really but, common for sergeants. As the Primarch Robutier mm -hmm. Gilliman reminds us, quote, But these are mere tools. A tactical Marine's true weapons are his courage, his wits, and his dedication to his brothers. He will bring his foe to battle in a manner and time of his choosing. Never himself cool, called though. unready or ill-prepared for the task at hand. In defense, yeah. he shall Heavy. be stalwart yeah. as the mountain oh, of walk. walk stood firm against the what enemies of man. Why is it so big? In attack, he shall strike with the wrath of the immortal emperor, felling the foe. The orcs tend to augment themselves. Oh, so they can just build anything, mercy, can't they? Remorse or fear. In terms of vehicle support, this company can call upon the usual complement of dreadnoughts, transports, and tanks. But for even greater flexible deployment, the seventh also maintains a permanent pool of land speeders, as dictated by the Codex, providing the chapter with a ready force of specialists in these nimble combat skimmers. Battle brothers who continue yeah. to prove themselves will now make their way into the sixth company. Within the Ultramarines, this last unit of the reserve companies is known as the Brethren of the Forge and is led by the famously aggressive Captain Maximus Epithus. 
The sixth mm -hmm. is in many ways a mirror of the seventh, in that it also consists of ten tactical squads. However, its members are more experienced and leverage these skills for a doctrine of armored spearhead assaults. As such, they All make right. great All use of NPCs to oh, rapidly okay. maneuver its infantry, while being supported by dreadnoughts, battle tanks, mobile artillery, and gunships requisitioned from yeah, the armory. See. Such is the extensive mechanized training of the brothers who... Like, while the tactical squads charge forward, this company would be mostly used to, uh, uh, just shell the yeah, enemy, I guess. That their ranks will be called upon to provide an honor guard to watch over the chapter armory within the fortress of Hera. And many such men will go on to become future tech marines. Hmm. That's Should cool. a space marine survive their long and bloody journey through the scout and reserve companies, a service which will take years, if not decades, to achieve, he will finally be granted the honor of advancing to the battle companies. We shall delve into their ranks in part two of this series, but you can get that? sneak previews yeah. and grab HD downloads of all our art by joining our Patreon or becoming a member of this channel. A huge thanks to our current supporters, as well as the researchers, writers, and artists for making this episode possible. We couldn't have done it without this team and this community. That was amazing. That was really good, actually. <coughs> that was my stomach. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, please go and give your love to the original video, uh, which will be found in the links below. Uh, go give them your full support, and thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>